It's time for business news with Richard Southern. The cost for everything continues to balloon, and that includes building transit, Richard. Uh, that's uh, right, Erica. The uh, Ontario Relief Line ballooning in costs. The uh, taxpayer costs way off track here. Uh, looks like it could be costing taxpayers double what the premier initially indicated it would. Uh, the Ontario line, as you may recall, set to run from the Science Centre in the east to Ontario Place in the west. Uh, it was unveiled by Premier Ford in 2019, and at the time he said it would cost $10.9 billion. But new documents from Infrastructure Ontario show the cost has now ballooned to nearly $20 billion for the 16-kilometer line, the NDP, the opposition at Queen's Park taking big issue with that. A statement to City News from the Transportation Minister, Carolyn Mulrooney, reads in part, quote, construction projects worldwide are facing economic challenges with rising inflation costs and supply chain shortages. This is not unique to the Ontario line. So there you go. The government, Erica, uh, blaming rising inflation for the ballooning costs. All right, and they say age ain't nothing but a number, but Freedom 55 is quickly becoming a distant dream for most Canadians, Richard. Uh, yeah, that's right. Forget about Freedom 55. Uh, it seems Canadians are spending fewer years in retirement. Um, the average uh, Canadian uh, woman spends uh, 24.1 years in retirement now. The average man spending 19.4 years, according to new numbers. Uh, on average, women uh, enjoy more years in retirement than men for, for two reasons. They retire earlier uh, on average, and they tend to live longer. But, you know, the number of years spent in retirement for both sexes peaked in 2011 and has been falling ever since. And that's true uh, for a lot of uh, places right now. There's actually a new report in uh, that looked at where the best places to retire are. Norway actually topped the list for its uh, long lifespan and top-notch health care and retirement plans, Erica. All right, and finally, uh, very exciting. Team Canada kicked off its World Cup journey today. And that country, and the country that ends up winning it all will be bringing home much more than a trophy. Yeah, I mean, if they, uh, I was going to say if they had beer to spare, they could just send it over to me, but uh, that's that's a lot of beer. They have their uh, Budweiser, Erica. Uh, Qatar's last-minute decision to ban alcohol at the World Cup stadiums left Budweiser with a lot of suds on its hands. We now know what the company's going to do with it. Budweiser, it says, will ship all the unsold buds to the country that wins the tournament. Uh, Qatar, of course, a Muslim country, tightly regulates alcohol. In September, it had said that ticketed fans would be able to buy those Budweiser's in stadiums. Changed its mind the other week. Budweiser owned by Imbev, and the company reportedly paid $75 million for FIFA sponsorship. So the decision uh, to not sell alcohol really threw a wrench into World Cup marketing plans. But there you go. If Canada has a better showing in games two and three, maybe We'll have all the beer we can drink, Erica.